assalamu alaikum everyone welcome back to this channel so this is me alia wahid and in this video we are going to discuss about the anti cuff agents so in the previous lecture we have discussed about the cuff we have discussed that what are the diseases in which you can observe cuff as a symptom and we have also discussed some drugs which are anti cuff agents but now i am doing such uh, some modification in that lecture and again explaining all the uh, anti cuff agents so here we have three uh, classification of anti cuff agents uh, which are the anti torsive drugs some are expectorant and some are mucolytics now first of all we will discuss the anti torsive drugs actually we have discussed in the previous lecture that the cuff has two types first is the dry cuff and second is the productive cuff or you can say as a Uh, wet cuff okay so now uh, these anti torsive drugs these are the drugs which are used to treat your dry cuff you know very well dry cuff is a type of a cuff in which you produce no mucus in it and it is very harmful cuff so we have to suppress it so the mechanism of action of anti torsive drug is that it is going to suppress the cuffing centers which are present in your brain in the previous lecture we have discussed that what are the uh, cuff centers and where they are present we have discussed that in the uh, uh, medulla oblongata we have uh, some areas where these cuff centers present like in the cerebellum like in the subcortical agent in the uh, cortical agents these centers are present and we have to suppress them so the mechanism of all the anti torsive drug is that they are going to suppress these centers and the cuff will be uh, stopped now uh, let discuss the classification of anti torsive drugs so th they are divided into the three groups first they are acting on in the peripheral area what is mean by peripheral area means they are acting in your peripheral part of the body and help to stop the cuff some are the drugs which act centrally mean they are uh, going to act on your brain and inside your brain you know that cuff centers are present so they are suppressing the cuff centers and some drug also act on the brain mean in the central area also act in the peripheral area having both actions so now we will discuss the detail of uh, all of these drugs like peripheral acting drugs include demersalt and steam inhalations and uh, the centrally acting drugs it again divided into the two groups first is the opioid and narcotics drugs opioid and narcotics uh, drugs are those drugs which contain morphine derivatives so they have uh, you know that morphine and its derivative they have sedative action so they can cause you uh, dizziness to all of you so this is the side effect of these drugs so the drugs include in this class is the codeine phylocodeine and ethyl morphine so they are all are the derivatives of morphine but some are the drugs which are non opioid mean having no analgesic action they will no cause sedative or dizziness action they can also called as no, non narcotics like desmomethorphan these are some drugs now some are the drugs which can act centrally as well as uh, peripherally like benzonate and carbetapentane these are the drugs which also act on your central area uh, central areas of your brain and also act in the peripheral area stopping the cuff of uh, your body now uh, starting the detail of every drug so first of all we will discuss the peripheral acting drugs and we will discuss the both of these types so here the peripheral acting anti torsive drugs are given so first the uh, anti torsive drug is the demulcent demulcent act on the peripheral area what it is doing actually it is a muco protective agent what is mean by muco mean mucus protective mean it is going to protect your mucus okay what are the demulcents what are the examples of them so licorice or loranges licorice is a plant a root which is uh, used in order to treat uh, your mucus or protect your mucus okay and loranges are also a type of drug uh, which is very sweet in nature and they are engulfed into your body and then they uh, they show localized effect in your throat causing the smoothness of it and also so protect the mucus so uh, if the mucus is uh, protective then it's mean you will uh, it will stop the cough examples are the honey syrup uh, sweet syrups and glycerin are uh, one of the best example 
where is their action so they act above the larynx mean in the pharynx of your body so in the pharynx when the inflammation happen then it is called as pharyngeal titus gititis means inflammation so whenever the inflammation happens inside the pharynx you will take honey you will take serum you can take uh, glycerin and uh, licorice and lozenges so they will protect the mucus present uh, in the larynx in the pharynx and uh, give you a more uh, mucoprotective and smoothness in your throat now let discuss the second type which act in the peripheral area this is called as steam inhalation mean sometimes the doctor gave you a steam inhaler in which you you boil the uh, water and simply you put that steam inhaler into this boiling water and after that you will uh, suck uh, you will take the steam and this steam will uh, cause a localized effect in your throat in your larynx above the larynx or also below the larynx causing the protection of your mucus and causing decrease in the inflammation so what are these drugs so they are causing localized effect only and what is uh, their action that how they are producing so they increase the concentration of mucus so the more the mucus produce more the smoothness occur in your throat and your cough will be uh, stopped so in the dry cough you know that no mucus is produced by giving the steam inhalation we are increasing the production of mucus as the mucus production increases your cough will be stopped now what are the examples of steam inhalation menthol and camphor they are the important steam inhalers which are given to the patient now uh, the peripheral acting anti torsive agents are covered we have discussed both of these types now we are going to start the centrally acting anti torsive drugs so the first class which is include in that centrally acting anti torsive drugs is the opioid drugs or can called as narcotics agents so the first uh, example of opioid drugs is the codeine codeine is a morphine derivative so morphine is going to be derive some groups attached with it and the codeine will form what is the action of codeine actually it is going to suppress the cough centers which is present in your brain so it is acting centrally on your brain uh, let discuss the mechanism of action first it is suppressing the cough center second it also act on the beta 2 adrenergic receptors these receptors are present in your lungs actually uh, after going to them they will cause the bronchial dilation of your uh, bronchioles and uh, when the bronchioles dilate mean it is going to increase the size of your bronchioles let's suppose this is a bronchiole first it has very small diameter okay now when this drug goes like this is the beta 2 receptor present on it when the drugs bind with it it increase the size of bronchiole like i am drawing here let's suppose now the size of bronchiole increases so that way in this way when the uh, bronchial dilation happens the secretion of mucus inside the bronchiole will decrease okay first it is very high uh, secretions now as the size increase the bronchial dilation happens secretion will decrease out and cough will be suppressed so this was the mechanism of action of codeine but it has many side effects of it so the uh, the doctors uh, don't prefer codeine to give the patient but uh, sometimes they have uh, the uh, according to the condition of the patient they give codeine to uh, that particular patient so that the patient will go to sleep and the cough will not happen to him so but mostly uh, the doctors don't give codeine because of their side effects now let's discuss what are the side effects of them so actually they are sedatives causing the sleepness they can cause drug dependence when the patient take that drug in high dose second they can cause constipation fatigue and dysphoria dysphoria means the disturbance in the feeling of that particular patient so what are the contraindication of codeine uh, contraindication are pregnancy and lactation so you should not give uh, codeine to a particular patient in the pregnancy or lactation because they can go uh, towards the fetus and then cause adverse effect on him so we have covered that uh, what are the actions of opioid drugs and what are they are doing what is the mechanism of them and what are the adverse effect of them so due to their adverse effect we we are going to discuss about the non opioid drugs which uh, don't cause sedative action to the patient 
so the most important known opioid drug is the dextromethorphan so it is mostly used because it has no um, sedative action it is also a synthetic derivative of morphine it is also derived from morphine but it has no sedative action mean it doesn't cause dizziness to that patient and doesn't cause the drug dependence to him so we can uh, give dextromethorphan to the patients but there is that uh, the uh, uh, the patient uh, the drug uh, the doctor should not give dextromethorphan to the children so they should give dextromethorphan to the adults because they can cause uh, in the low dose it is good but when the dose increases it can cause dysphoria i mean disturbance of the feeling so sometimes the feelings are so disturbed that the child cannot bear so that therefore we cannot give these drugs to the child but can give to the adults because they can bear that so this was all about the non opioid drugs now we have covered all the drugs which are acting peripherally and as well as all the drugs which are acting centrally so centrally again divided into opioid and non opioid drugs so we have discussed what are the opioid drugs what are the non opioid drugs now we are going towards the uh, drugs which can act both which also has some effect on the central areas of our brain can also affect on the peripheral areas of our body so what are these drugs so uh, the most important drug which can act centrally as well as peripherally is the benzonate what is benzonate and what is the mechanism of it here i have give the mechanism that it block the stretch receptors what are the stretch receptors these are some chemical receptors or some mechanical receptors are present where they are present actually you know that when a, a, a cough causing agents enter into your respiratory system let's suppose i am drawing here that this is your nasal cavity and after nasal cavity the uh, agent goes in your trachea or in your larynx and pharynx so this is the cough causing agent it could be anything it goes here now at this wall there is various kind of stress receptors are present like suppose i am drawing here this is the stress receptor so they can detect that uh, a, a particular foreign substance or a bacteria enters now what is going to happen they will send a signal toward the brain let's suppose here it is a brain so they will send a signal towards the brain and which is sending signals this is the vagus nerve okay so vagus is the cranial nerve number 10 so it will send signals to your brain and in inside your brain you know cuff centers are present so actually it is sending signals to the cuff centers and when the centers uh, signals goes to cuff center then the cuff center activates and they will cause coughing so actually what is the action of benzonate benzonate will block this receptor when you give benzonate to that patient the drugs like suppose the drug is here the drug will go and they will block this receptor now this receptor cannot send signals to brain okay i am raising this signal now the brain uh, uh, take no signal no cough will happens so this was the action of benzonate but it has some side effect like it can cause dizziness to that patient it can react with the oral mucosa if you take the drug orally so they can react with the oral mucosa and causing a lot of reactions so we cannot give that drug orally okay but they can cause numbness of your tongue mouth and throat so these are some side effect of benzonate so therefore we should we are not uh, preferably use it the most important uh, drug which we are using in the cough syrups is the dextromethorphan okay now we have covered about the anti tyrosine drugs all we have discussed the classification of it now the second type of anti cough agent is the expectorant now let's discuss what is a expectorant